neutralizing the never. What is up, alien army? I am Oculus, Oculus the, the alien, alien next door, next door purveyor, purveyor of, of esoteric, esoteric lore. lore. And on this channel, we discuss everything out of this world. So how to neutralize the never, and why is this so fucking important? When we're talking about neutralizing the never, this is in regards to you have this trigger or you have this default list of must nots or you have deal breakers so to speak whatever the case may be for you this is just something that you're so adamant against that you are actually conjuring it more into your experience because of your focus on it the word never this has a really powerful impact even though it is viewed potentially as perhaps negative the never is just going to boomerang back at you with that thing that you said never to let's say you are you're looking for a potential partner and then you make a list of what you would like what you don't like cool the last thing to do is add never i would never date someone like that i would never live in that neighborhood i would never Never eat that food I would never drive that car I would never visit that country right you say never 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 and then what happens is that that thing that you never wanted is going to present itself to you because the word never and me speaking from like a wordsmith perspective I just see the word never as like a prime conjuring word because I'm pretty certain that you can identify with the time that that actually happened and I believe that this goes on with everyone sometimes it'll go on multiple times but if you say oh I would never do that or I've never this or never that especially even with yourself it's like oh I would never do that and then two months later that's exactly what the fuck you're doing right so it could be in regards to anything it could even be in regards to yourself is the point that I'm conveying here but when we say never that's like a supercharge of sort of like dare me I don't know if that makes sense but from a Okay, from a universal perspective, yes, when you say never, you technically have a charge to it because you feel so vehemently about it that yes, you have that within you and it, it's going to present itself unless you neutralize that charge. Hence why I'm doing this video. But also the word never is somewhat of like a fourth dimensional, because remember 4D is like, it's potent with magic and it's potent with universal forces and higher knowledge and things like that but the 4d is a bit of a trickster and a lot of times it inverts things so it can invert the word never into always or ever after do you see what i'm saying so the word never i'm just seeing it i don't know the origin thing i'm just going by pure channel so this is the definition that I'm using. So never actually computes to ever after. So it's sort of like because you're feeling so vehemently about it, it's not acceptance of all that is and that everything is perfectly in harmony all of the time. So it's not coming from a place of 5D, God, life, force, universe, soul, consciousness like that. It's coming from a 4D perspective, perhaps a 3D perspective. And when you're saying the word never there's typically an emotional charge associated with it because why else would you say never to something there has to be something in there that got you to say the word never so take a look at the nevers that you have going on and just dig around in there and and try to decipher the reason why they are never now this is not saying that let's say someone was in an abusive relationship with someone and they told themselves no I will never tolerate that again totally different this is more 
more sort of like an ego reaction to something that involves a trigger. This is not something that you have consciously and sentiently experienced and then told yourself that you will never experience that again. Because when you say that you are not going to experience something ever again, that is a never, but it's not a never where it's sort of like haughty. It's like a, okay, I'm done with that. I'm moving on type of deal. So there's a difference betwixt leaving something behind, be it a person, a place, an object, whatever leaving something behind you're not necessarily saying never you're just like okay I'm over that I'm done you captain motherfucking Audi with that whereas never is like oh I would never do that I would never do this or blah 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 right like in regards to yourself you're like oh I would never do this I would never date a person like that I would never go here I would never wear that it's from a place of haughtiness so you also have to take that into consideration because being done with something and moving on is totally different than acting saying never because when you're bringing the word never in it's like the four D's way of kind of like dare me it's kind of like you're daring that to come into your experience that's the best way that I can describe it in this context because you are everything that's going on within you and it's going to be presented to you but if you don't want to deal with something let's say you have a deal breaker in a relationship you're fucking allowed to okay let's say you have a deal breaker you don't want to eat a certain type of food that's it that, cool okay we are in third dimensional physical vessels and we can have things that are a physical preference but when we're coming in with the never it's charged up it's charging up something that we don't want whereas if we know that we don't want something let's say i'll use again the example someone was in an abusive relationship they're like i'm not gonna do that again i'm over that that chapter is done or I tasted that type of candy bar when I was a child and that wasn't for me. I'm not going to do that again. There's no charging up like never, never, never where you're going to bring those type of scenarios back into your experience. So when you're saying never to anything, it's more like an ego type of fear that's going on there, or it's something that might be a trigger, or it's just something that might cause an adrenaline rush within you, right? Like, oh, I would never do that because you're hyping it up. Whereas if you simply just didn't care, if you knew that that type of person wasn't for you, if you knew that you weren't keen on tasting that type of food ever again, Again, or visiting that city ever again or flying on that airline ever again you would just be like yeah that was wasn't for me I'm good or even if you're viewing things let's say you are looking at couches and you have a specific set physical preference because in third dimensional vessels we can have preferences for one thing over the other totally fine ain't nothing wrong with that different strokes for different folks that's the beauty of why everyone is an individual because something that is for person A might not be for person B. And I wouldn't get that suede couch. I prefer this leather one over here. You're not charging up that suede couch. You're just observing, eh, yeah, that's not for me. But if you go into that store and you look at the suede couch and you look at the leather couch and you're like, man, that fucking suede couch, I can't stand that. Oh, I would never get that. Hell no. What's going to happen now? It's sort of like you dared that suede couch to to arrive in your experience so you might be shopping for couches and, and your partner comes home that same day and they're like oh look I ordered you this surprise and it's that suede couch that you swore that you would never get right it's gonna somehow bring its way it's gonna like kind of like push and shove its way into your experience like you said never right mm, motherfucker here I is now what that's what the word never is doing when it's charged up versus walking away from something, walking away from someone, choosing the leather couch, saying, that's, that's sweet couch, couch. That's, that's not really, really my, my style, style, but I know it's perfect for someone. This leather one now, mm, that's my jam. There are different ways that you are gonna go about moving along from something, right? Because now you're not focused on the suede couch, you're not hating on the suede couch, you're not throwing shade at the suede couch, you're just like, 
oh man, that's not for me. And you move along. Okay, so you move along from what you don't want. You stop looking at it. You stop observing it. You're not walking on the sidewalk. You see a fucking pile of dog shit. What are you going to do? Are you going to step around it? Or are you going to go, oh, 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 and like and fucking tap dance in the motherfucking shit? Literally, right? So there's a difference. That ain't for me. I ain't getting my shoes dirty today. I'm going to walk around, mosey on forward versus someone else who was like, oh, never. Like they're, they're talking about like they, they would never step in dog shit, right? I don't know where this example came from, but just roll with it. So they're, they're just all about that, right? Oh, that would never happen. And then boom, nice big pile of shit that they just stepped in. And it's like, oh, never, right? Well, here I is. So when you're using the word never in a charged up context, that is being conveyed to me that it's like you're daring whatever that is through the rush of adrenaline. Like, mm, try me, motherfucker. And then because you're creating everything, it's like, oh, okay, well, here I is. Try me, motherfucker. And it's sort of like you're dueling with the thing that you swore you never wanted, right? So it can present itself into your experience. So let's say if you do have deal breakers, right? This is especially important if you're in regards to like dealing with another person. You know how you want someone to treat you and you know how you don't want someone to treat you, right? Be it a friend, a co-worker, a boss, a lover, what have you. You're like, hmm, that's not for me, right? And it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you personally experienced before. It could just be something that maybe you witnessed someone else performing that thing, right? So if let's say you're witnessing your friend cheating on their partner and you're like, oh, I don't agree with that. So you're going to leave it alone, right? You're just going to be like, okay, you know, mm, that's not the type of relationship I want to be in, but you know, I'm going to be over here. Versus if you witness your friend cheating on their partner and you're thinking like, oh wow, what's going on? Like what happened? Why are they cheating on their partner? I would never be in a relationship and cheat on my partner and that's what the individual is thinking and then boom a little while later you find yourself in a relationship and you're the one that is cheating on your partner just like you swore you would never do because you witnessed that somewhere else so it might not be something that you experienced it might be something that you were witness to and then you have some sort of ego charging it up type of deal going on and then boom you're doing the very thing that you swore that you would never do so never is the the dare word of the universe because the way that it can present itself back remember that boomerang situation going on oh man that shit is interesting so you can have a preference for something remember suede couch okay not my jam i'm gonna be over here chilling on the supple leather and that's it there's nothing that you're doing to be disrespectful or admonishing or hyping up that suede couch because this comes back into reality trans surfing where it's like the excess potential if something is charged up it's like never like never is a strong word it really is i mean you might have other type of words that you feel are very strong especially in the realm of like mysticism and things like that but i'm just seeing as never it's sort of like the, oh what oh you dare me now do you okay i showed up now what like that's that's just how i'm seeing it so to neutralize it you do all of the things that i already said you just turn your attention away from that thing that you know is not for you that thing that you're over or the thing that you observe that you're not in resonance with you're like okay well that's going on over there i'm gonna focus my attention over here here and you're not saying never and therefore you reduce the charge and I do want to convey again you know what is meant for you and you know what doesn't resonate with you you might go to a car dealership and you like three different cars that you test drove but you know that two of them are not the one that you're going to purchase in that moment but you're not being like oh well you know I would never drive that type of car you're just like well this third car that one suits me better than all of them I'm gonna go with this and it's not like you're 
hating on the other two cars and saying never, never, never. You're like, well, they don't work for me. They might work for someone else, but I'm going to be over here. You immediately neutralize that charge and then whoosh, it dissolves because now it's neutralized. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. So you have to make up for that excess potential, so to speak. And how you do that, you just turn your attention elsewhere and you direct that attention elsewhere, but you placate that that never you're sort of like okay well that's not for me but someone else might like it and then boom the charge is neutralized so how to neutralize the never that's what we spoke of thank you for joining me i am oculus the alien next door we will chit chat again soon